talk about nuclear particles. <clears throat> First we'll talk about alpha particles. We can use two different symbols for alpha particles. The one we'll use most often is this one, because alpha particles have a mass of four and a nuclear charge of two. And so the mass of four and nuclear charge of two. When something undergoes alpha decay, it decreases its mass by four and decreases its nuclear charge by two. <clears throat> if we were to bombard or capture an alpha particle with another nucleus, then it would increase the mass by four and increase the nuclear charge by two. Alpha particles have limited penetrating power because they're slow moving, and, but if they do get into your body, they can cause a lot of harm because they are so slow moving. Beta particles, we use the symbol most often, 0 minus 1e, e, but sometimes you'll see this symbol as well. When something undergoes beta decay, there is no change in its mass, and but there is an increase in its nuclear charge because an electron has no mass and has a negative 1 uh, charge. Bombardment and capture of a beta particle would result in no change in mass and a decrease in nuclear charge by one. Beta particles are essentially fast moving electrons. They're more they have more penetrating power than alpha particles, so they're harder to protect ourselves from than alpha particles are. Gamma rays have the symbols 0, 0, gamma. I use a Y because I can't draw a gamma. But de gamma decay and bombardment and capture has no effect on the charge or the mass because gamma rays do not have any charge or nu nuclear <coughs> any nuclear charge or mass. They're just energy. They have the most penetrating power of all the particles produced in e and they are produced in every nuclear reaction. We don't always write them in nuclear reactions, but we do know they're always produced in nuclear reactions. Positrons are basically a positive electron. Their symbol is 0, 1, E. If we have positron emission, we're not going to have any change in our mass. They still have no mass. We're going to decrease the nuclear charge. If we have positron capture, we're going to have still no change in mass, but an increase in nuclear charge. A neutron, we've looked at before, for uh, nuclear chemistry, when we do um, equations on the next video, we use the symbol 1 and 0 n for a neutron. And do make sure you got using lowercase n, and so we can distinguish it better from a nitrogen. Neutron emission is going to decrease the mass, have no change in charge. If we capture or bombard um, neutrons to something else, it's going to increase the mass, but still have no change in nuclear charge. Neutrons are usually used to increase the mass to create unstable um, isotopes that will decay and then release energy. And that's the basic premise of how a nuclear reactor works. Transmutation is the process of creating new elements by inducing instability. In other words, the process that we, when we bombard neutrons to another atom to make it heavier, to make it more unstable, then we create new elements through this process of transmutation. Um, this is a form of alchemy, if you will, if you remember from history class. Uh, alchemists were trying to make gold. They still can't make gold, but they have learned how to make new elements. There are four types of nuclear reactions. You have natural radioactive decay, artificial radioactive decay, fission, and fusion. Natural radioactive decay is going to be like carbon-14. Carbon-14 is present in every living thing. When that the living things die, then the carbon-14 begins to decay away. And so <clears throat> you end up with um, where you have to decay naturally. And that's how we can also tell how old things are through carbon-14 dating. Artificial radioactive decay is the idea that we we'll just talked about of transmutation. Where we just where we increase the mass to make to make an atom unstable so that it will decay. Fission and fusion we'll talk a little bit more about, but basically fission is when you have 
a large atom and you force it to break apart. And that does occur in nuclear reactors. And then fusion is when you take two smaller atoms and you fuse them together, making a larger atom. And this occurs in the sun, which of course is a star, so it occurs in all stars, but important to us, our sun. The main cause of radioactivity is unstable nuclei. Atoms with less than 30 protons have to have a 1 to 1 proton to neutron ratio in order to be stable. Anything other than a 1 to 1 proton neutron ratio, then it is unstable. If you recall, this number here on top is the mass number, which is the protons plus the neutrons. And so in this case, we have seven protons, and then if we had seven protons, that means we have seven neutrons. And so that's a one to one ratio. So this would be a stable nucleus. Although nitrogen 15 still has seven protons, It now has eight neutrons, so that is no longer a one-to-one -one ratio, and so that is not a stable nuclei. Carbon-12 has six protons, and therefore if it has six protons, to be a, a mass of 12, it has to have six neutrons, and so that is a one-to-one -one ratio, and so that is a stable nuclei. So carbon-14, again, has six protons, it has six protons and a mass of 14, then it has eight neutrons, which is not a one-to-one -one ratio, so that is not a stable nuclei. Atoms that have more than 30 protons have to have a 1 to 1.5 proton-neutron ratio. The larger atoms can hold more mass. Okay, so 1 to 1.5 proton-neutron ratio to be stable. So therefore, particles have to be absorbed or emitted in order to stabilize. And and so most often they are emitted, and that is natural radioactive decay. If we uh, force them to absorb, then they will, that is the transmutation or artificial um, radioactive decay. The result of um, instability is this idea of new elements being made through the process of transmutation. All elements with atomic number larger than 92 uranium are all created by man and are all radioactive because they don't exist naturally and so their nucleus is unstable. 